Now, note again that if you're pulling money out of of the checking account, just pulling cash out, we would like to come up with a system that we're only doing that if we're pulling out for personal use. In other words, if you're gonna pay for something for the business with cash, that's not typically what we would like to do because we want to have an audit trail for anything that we're paying because uh, we wanna be able to verify that we're paying it for the business. So if we have a legitimate business expense, especially in the United States, where we have an income tax system, if the IRS comes back and says, what did you spend this money on? Uh, what we would like to be able to say is I have this audit trail that shows it clearly being spent on this particular thing, which is easier if we're not doing cash transactions, right? The cash transaction uh, eliminates the, the ability to, to, make the, to make that connection, which you might want on the personal side of things, right? I don't want the IRS tracking all my personal transactions and whatnot. I, but I want to have, be able to write off the business type of transactions. So that's what we would like to do. Every time you, t if you're taking the money out, just cash, then try to do that with, with uh, just draws. If it's a business expense, use some kind of electronic transfer so that we can make sure that we have an audit trail for it is the general rule. If you do pull money out for tips or something like that that are business related because cash is just the best uh, method to use, then you want to have to keep the receipts and whatnot so that you can you, you can verify the transactions you're making. So let's imagine this one was was taken out for personal use. So I'm going to add the details, and I'm going to say that uh, this this is going to be uh, a transfer. Okay, uh, we we might just put the we we might just put like owner, 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 <laughs> and then I'm going to say it's not an item reoccurring transfer and the account that it's going to go to is draws draws now if we're paying our, if we're just taking money out kind of like a salary out of the business that's somewhat standardized then we'll be able to see that clearly but any money that's just cash coming out of the checking account that the owner is pulling out we would like to be able to assume uh, that is draws now if you can't assume that then then you're going to have to say in your bookkeeper working with someone else or even if you're doing your own books you're going to have to then say okay what did i spend this cash on again that's not what you really want to do that's a, that's kind of a pain uh to have to do that so you'd like to be able to assume it was draws okay i've said that you're you're belatling the point here for crying out loud we heard we hear you we hear you okay just making sure because it messes me up, man. It messes up my bookkeeping. So I want to make sure you don't, you know what I'm talking about. In any case, we're going to go down uh, in the checking account. So if I go into the checking account, we see it coming out of the checking account uh, with a money out form, $75 dollarinos, and back to the balance sheet. Nothing happened on the income statement. The other side, of course, on the balance sheet, you can call it like a contra equity account down here with the draws because it's pulling down the equity. So we took this money out, but it didn't flow through the income statement like on the retained earnings. It just went directly to uh, to the draws uh, account. Uh, or the, well, the current earnings would flow into retained earnings, right? So current earnings flow, this is the draws. Now, the other thing I just wanna point out here is that if you've taken accounting courses then you'll note that the temporary accounts are the income statement accounts, which will close out to retained earnings. And typically we close out draws to retained earnings as well, annually or possibly monthly, uh, usually annually, most likely for small businesses. But zero will, will not automatically close out the draws to the retained earnings. It will close out automatically the current earnings from the income statement to retained earnings. So it's not a big deal if you if you don't want to close your draws out, then this draws account is just gonna keep on going up. This will just be the lifetime draws instead of the current year draws. If you want to track your draws just for the current year, you can go into the draws account, look at the detail and see what happened in the current year, what was the increase for the current year, or you can do a year end adjusting entry, 
closing the draws out to retained earnings so that you can just see the draws accumulating upwards for the current year. Nothing happened to the income statement, which is good. If we did record it to the income statement as miscellaneous expense or something, it would be an increase to the expense, which would be lowering net income. All right, let's do another one and imagine that we paid for something that I'm seeing in the bank feeds, but it was for something personal as opposed to uh, business related. So let's pick up another one of these items here on uh, the Primerica. Let's just, let's do another one of these and pretend that this one was uh, for personal use. Let's, re let's pretend it was like Disneyland or something, right? I, I look through here and I say, well, that's not a business thing, but it came out of the business checking account. Well, what, what do I do now? Because what should have happened is you should have taken the cash out of the checking account, which I would easily see as a draw because it was a cash draw, which I would have recorded the draws. And then you could have spent the money out of your personal account for Disneyland or whatever. And then it would, and then we could track that on the personal zero side of things, but you didn't do that. We didn't do that. Let's imagine. And we, we put it, we just spent money for personal stuff out of the business checking account. Now, obviously one of the problems with that is it's difficult, especially if you have a separate person doing the bookkeeping than the owner for them to be able to say, is this business or is this personal? What, what account should it go to? But if we can differentiate that, we could say, well, I know this is personal, then we can put it to the draws account directly, right? So now it's not a big deal. We could still deal with it. We could just put it to the draws account instead of to the income account. Now, the other thing you could do if you want to track personal and business on the same in the same uh, zero software is you might try to use categories breaking out the income statement between business and personal so that you could put it to like a personal uh, you know expense account entertainment that's personal and possibly break out a different column on the income statement that's a little that adds a little bit more complication but it allows you to to track you know, business and personal in one account. You can't really do that with larger businesses because the balance sheet is gonna be more difficult to break out. And sometimes even for taxes, you need to report the balance sheet on, uh, but possibly small businesses might be able to, to get away with that. So you might wanna look into that option. All right, so I'm just gonna add the detail here. That's the wrong one. Hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I wanna add the detail for, for this one. Uh, okay. So, and I'm just gonna say Primerica, okay. And then I'm gonna say this was for personal use. So we'll say $25 and I'm just gonna put it to the draws account. Draws, draw. All right, so now, so now we'll just put that directly to the draws account. So I'll just save it and boom and uh, reconcile, okay. So then if I go back on over here, I could say update if it was a decrease to the checking account, which is a liability because it's, it's overdrawn. And now the draws account has the 150 in it. So there we have it. And so there we have it. Now the, the added complication with this is that, you know, we didn't, we're not showing any detail for the personal side. You know, if you want to track your personal financial statements, you would like to record that as a personal expense on your personal financials, which you might do in another zero accounting system or again you might use that class tracking uh, kind of system but a lot of times people are really kind of just concerned with getting their 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 corporate or their business side correct so they can uh, comply with whatever needs need to be complied with such as in the united states for example taxes but in any case nothing's recorded on the income statement for that transaction let's uh notice if i go to this first tab by the way we've been still building our financial statements from this information so you you could see that uh the we've been reconcile everything here our account transactions we've been making our account transactions and reconciling them meaning they obviously tie out to what's on the bank statement because uh because we built them directly from uh, the bank statement. So we're creating these transactions from the bank feeds as we go in our contacts. We can also see that we are, you know, creating our contacts as we go and we've been creating our chart of accounts. All right, let's open up another tab, right click in the tab and look at our trial balance just to see 
how this trial balance is, is formulating because I think that gives us a good look of what is happening, reports and trial balance, trial balance. And this is just a trial of our balances. So if I scroll down, notice uh, this is just the balance sheet on top of the income statement now. And now we've added another account to the equity section. So equity stops at retained earnings and then the income statement happens, income minus expenses. Debits equal the credits because I have all the accounts, balance sheet and income statement accounts in debit and credit format, which is the same thing as saying in double entry accounting terminology that the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity, right? But where does the income statement fall into assets equal liabilities plus equity? The equity actually includes all of the income statement, which is summarized here at the 83849, which is what's on the income statement. 83849, the income statement giving us that performance statement, the temporary accounts showing our performance uh, over a certain time frame, a month or a year, for example.